All right. And without further ado, I would like to welcome New Japan Pro Wrestling's Kenny Omega. Kenny, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you. Very excited to take part in this. It's actually my first time doing something like this, so hopefully it goes smoothly with, uh, without any incidents. Well, let me tell you, the questions are already pouring in. So if you want to start off, just right. talk a little bit about the broadcast, about your match, about your preparation, your training for it, and then we'll go ahead and get started with the Q&As. Sure. I mean, uh, first of all, I mean, I myself am very excited for uh, the upcoming broadcast. I think it is the first time we've done something live, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so to go to America and uh, kind of debut our brand live to the American fans and, well, whoever's making the trip out to Long Beach, it's a very exciting time for me and for everyone involved in New Japan. And, um, you know, for it to also air live on television, well, that's fantastic as well. So, um, you know, we're all going to bring our A game, and we're all hoping that both of these shows are going to go down as um, something really entertaining and uh, fun from start to finish. Fantastic. All right, well, let's kick it off here with our first question. It comes from Sean Radikin of the website Pro Wrestling Torch, and mm -hmm. he says, Now, Kenny, you're in the IWGP United States Championship Tournament, and you're going to play a large role in whether or not New Japan is success successful in growing their presence in the U.S. after this shows this weekend and beyond. So the question is, how do you see this tournament and the title eventually drawing the interest of Western fans? actually a very good question, one that I've pondered thoroughly. You know, it's always difficult when you introduce a new belt, um, which will then be thrown into the mix of belts that have such a rich and long history. So, I mean, the IWGP Heavyweight Championship goes back years and years and years. The Intercontinental Championship had a very rocky start, if you don't recall. Um, you know, it was, it was tough to take it as a very legitimate belt amongst New Japan Pro Wrestling. And I think any time you bring a new belt into the fold, there's always going to be that period of, okay, what's this belt going to turn out like? Um, you know, what tier is this belt? How, how, how important is it among all of these other belts, all these other championships that we have? Um, so I, I do believe that first and foremost, you know, this tournament to decide the belt, I mean, I'm hoping that everyone brings their best. And I'm hoping all of the tournament matches are going to be great because the better those matches are, the more legitimate the belt is right off the get-go. Um, for me, uh, look, I've said it before and I've said it a million times, I've always wanted to make this company more international, more worldwide. Uh, we've done pretty much everything we can do in, uh, in Japan, you know, in, our, in our home t uh, country. So it's about time for us to venture out. The demand is there. You know, I want to get out in front of our fans uh, around the world. And, um, you know, if we have a belt that I guess will be more of our international belt, um, you're going to need an ambassador to carry that thing, do it proud, uh, have those main event quality matches um, so that, you know, it can stand right, right up next to the Intercontinental, the heavyweight championship, and not look out of place. Fantastic. All right. Our next question here comes from Sean Ross Sapp with Fightful.com, and he wants to know, with New Japan Pro Wrestling debuting in the United States and you being on the show, how does that open the door for you to take additional U.S. dates, whether it's with Ring of Honor, PWG, or anyone else? Uh, huh. Well, I mean, before it was always a visa and timing issue. Uh, New Japan had really, you know, taken up most of my time, and I was never really, even, even in between tours, I was never really left with a lot of downtime because – in between tours, being the leader of the Bullet Club and, you know, possibly building towards a big match, I would have to do a lot of, you know, PR, sort of media stuff in Japan. Uh, with our international dates now being added to our already, um, our schedule to what we have in Japan, I can't imagine having more free time, but having the American visa does uh, open up, you know, some doors and possibilities for when there are windows here and there. Um, so it, it, I guess it, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. It goes both ways. I'll either be more busy because of our um, addition, additional um, foreign dates or uh, because I now have the ability to travel and, and work dates in America, those little tiny gaps in between my schedule, I now have the ability to take 
things um, stateside. And of course, you know, the promotions that he listed, Ring of Honor, PWG, those are the top of the list. Those are the places that I would go back to first in a heartbeat. All right. Um, let's see. The next question here comes from Jim Varcelone, who's with the Miami Herald, and he wants to know, what are you most looking forward to in competing for the NW, NW, NJPW uh, in the United States, and what do you expect from this crowd, a different crowd than the one in Japan? Uh, I mean, everywhere you go, there's going to be a different crowd, and there's even different crowds within Japan. So uh, I've, I've wrestled my fair share in Los Angeles and in California, um, and I, I love those people, and I love the crowd. And I, uh, from what I understand, we're getting a lot of outside um, people from the outside coming in to watch the show uh, from all different states, all different countries. So I think we're going to get a great mix of uh, people types and fan types. Um, so I think it's going to be a very original type of crowd, one that I possibly haven't ever wrestled in front of you know, with, with the, the kind of mix that we're going to have. So I'm really excited to um, – hopefully get in front of a crowd that is uh, ready to have fun. I think at the end of the day, that's pretty much what we're all going for. We want to show, we want to put our best foot forward and show everyone just what New Japan Pro Wrestling is, what it stands for. Um, and we want to give that, uh, you know, the full spectrum of what we're all about. So I think we're going to see, you know, the fun side of things, the serious side, the strong style of things. You're going to get um, all of the, all of the, the, the trimmings, with these shows coming up. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I look forward to hopefully, uh, you know, shows that will have a little bit of something for everyone. So I can't imagine any disappointed folks leaving those shows. I think it's going to be great for everyone. All right. This next question comes from Justin Barrasso of Sports Illustrated. Mm -hmm. he wants to know if this is a two-parter for you. Uh, so I'll ask the first part, and then when you're done, I'll ask the second one. The first sure. part says, psychologically, how do you feel going into the tournament for the IWGP U.S. Championship? Is it difficult to follow up after wrestling such a breathtaking match with Okada? Yeah, I mean, it, it's difficult because, you know, you go into the mindset where you're wrestling um, pretty much for, the, you know, the, the, the most prestigious wrestling prize and all professional wrestling. And I emptied the tank. I gave everything that I had on our probably number two or three show of the year. And to detach yourself from that and it kind of accept that, you know, maybe we're putting this story on pause and now we're going to start a new journey. It's tough to take your mind out of something that was so demanding and then completely change your mindset and then set your sights on something completely new um, while, while keeping it alive in the back of your mind. Uh, the issue and the story with Okada is far from over. But, um, you know, much like in life, sometimes you have to let things go, come back to them later. And um, I am not one to never, uh, not to give 100% at a return. So I do want to devote all of my uh, brain power, all of my, my physical athletic power towards putting forth a good performance, one that I'm proud of um, on the weekend. So um, it's, it's, it's that process of detachment, you know, to be in the hunt and to be in the thick of coming so close to having the IWGP Heavyweight Championship and then flipping a switch and saying, okay, no, it's back to zero, and we're going for a completely different belt now. And then after that, it's back to zero again because we've got to do the G1. So um, it's sort of that so close, so far sort of mindset, and you, you can't you can't hang on too hard to those to those old feelings as a, as a human and as a professional as well, because um, at a moment's notice, you could be doing something completely different the next day. All right, so the follow-up to that, and I think this is definitely relevant here, you are intrinsically connected to the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Mm -hmm. What do you expect to see in the match between Okada and Rhodes, and will you challenge the winner? So um, I am a, a very firm believer in Cody Rhodes. I think he is fantastic, an absolute superstar, um, unbelievable in the ring, 
great timing, great pacing. He's in great physical condition. Can cut a heck of a promo, and just an all-around good guy. So, um, and I, and I do believe that him challenging in America plays towards his strengths, and he's more familiar with the people here. So I do believe it's going to be a very different atmosphere than if they had done that match in Japan. So um, I expect, um, and you know, it makes me a little jealous of Okada's position where he is able to have all these different types of matches with all these different types of opponents. And again, he's going to be um, in foreign territory facing someone who is much more famous right now in America than he is in Japan. Um, so I, I expect a very different feeling of match. I'm not sure uh, how what percentage of the crowd will be behind Okada, what percentage will be behind Cody, but I do think it'll be a very Bullet Club-friendly uh, crowd. And uh, I would have no qualms of Cody taking the belt. However, I feel as though, um, and I had said this in previous interviews too, if I defeated Okada, I would want to make the American shows a complete Bullet Club takeover, and I would award Cody a title shot if he wanted one. So I would hope that, you know, once the shoe is on the other foot, if Cody does take the belt, if he out of the kind of his, of his heart, gave me a chance, a crack at the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. However, I am already in the U.S. title uh, picture with the tournament there. And then uh, I come directly back to Japan to enter the G1. So regardless, um, I will have to put that in the back of my mind for a little bit. But at the very least, if Cody does win the belt, I sort of feel safe that he would never dodge me and be a nice guy and give me a defense first in line. Excellent. All right. The next question here comes from David Dixon Span, and he wants to know, can, can you set the record straight on the rumors about your visa status in the U.S. the last few years before New Japan Pro Wrestling sponsored you? Was there a visa issue, or did you make a conscious choice not to wrestle in the U.S.? Um, okay, so uh, I had always um, – all right, so that's a tricky question. I had had offers from other companies and other promotions to award me a visa um, to do the paperwork for me, to apply and sponsor me into the country. However, um, New Japan had always wanted me to have a visa with them. I mean, after all, I'm contracted by New Japan. I should be working solely for New Japan. So um, – Whereas I did actually have a visa last year uh, for one reason or another. Um, we couldn't agree on any date to come out. Then when that visa expired, it expired right before I was able to come down to New York, which is just terrible timing, unlucky. Um, but I, I was in the process of reapplying for one. So afterwards, I had received the visa in question, and um, now I'm ready to go for the year 2017-2018. So it was, I mean, it was a mixture of me uh, being very selective. I didn't want to take a visa, just take a visa. I wanted to represent New Japan um, as, I, as I should. And, um, and it, when there was an offer to do some American bookings, which was, I believe, um, the ROH shows in Philadelphia and um, Manhattan, I think it was, two shows anyway, um, my visa had just expired a Two weeks before then, so I wasn't able to uh, to come out. So I was only able to do the Toronto show. All right. This next question comes from Raj Giri of WrestlingInc.com, and okay. he wants to know. Uh, well, a little bit of context for this one. He says, in the past, wrestlers like Stan Hansen have talked about being big stars in Japan, but still mm -hmm. being kept out of the inner circle because, at the end of the day, they were still foreign talents. Yes. Is that still the case, or in NJPW, do you feel like you have more control over the direction of your career within the company? <laughs> it's a very loaded question, a very difficult question. Um, there's there as as much truth as there is to that statement. You know the uh, the old glass ceiling theory, where you can only do so much in a foreign country because at the end of the day, as he had said your job is to put over the, the hometown talent. Uh, I mean, that's true to a degree. 
because you know when you're wrestling for a foreign company, chances are, and this isn't you know a guaranteed thing, but chances are there's going to be a, um, an established star that speaks the uh, the native language that lives there, that wrestles all of the bookings, um, doesn't travel too much outside of that home promotion, and companies will naturally want to build their company around that person. Uh, I had sort of made it my mission to to be treated less as a, as a foreigner, less as a guest. I wanted to be part of the team, part of the family. Um, I wanted to to show not only the company and to the people and to the fans, um, to everyone that, you know, my home is Japan. And I wanted to do the best I could um, just uh, not not as just as wrestler, but I mean just um, <laughs> this is such a tough question. Um, but never mind that. Uh, what I'm trying to say in general is that I think as long as you try as hard as you can and show that you can uh, answer the call and run with the ball when you get it. There really is no limit. Um, and we're in a business. Wrestling is a business. Uh, if people love you, if you're making money, uh, if the performances that you have are unlike anything anyone has ever seen, uh, you get put in a position to to be the man. Um, and whether you have an easier path or a more difficult path, it, I mean that's just that's just life. Maybe if I were, if I were Japanese, maybe if I were from another country that wasn't Canada, I would have an easier time. Maybe if I had a friend in the office, I'd have an easier time. Who knows? You never know. All I know is what I've been given and what I have, what opportunities lie before me, and I just try to make the best of them. And I'm not going to give up until I make it to the top. Excellent. Thank you for that one. All right. Next question for you. Um, this one comes from Ryan McKinnell with Yahoo Sports, and mm -hmm. it's a little bit of a long intro to it, so try and, and, and um, listen to this one. It is, sure. He says, so you're entering the United States for this historic card on the heels of two of the greatest matches in pro wrestling history. The mm -hmm. Wrestling Observer's Dave Meltzer gave the first match against Okada an unprecedented six stars followed just a few weeks ago by the first ever 6.25 star match in your second meeting, essentially labeling Okada versus Omega 2 the greatest wrestling match ever. Now, these ratings have been pontificated over and debated endlessly. So where do you stand on the honor? Do you embrace the 6.25, or would you prefer the classic benchmark five-star rating given to classic matches of decades prior? Um. And that's a very good question, and I've sort of given a little bit of thought towards it. I think that um, if you're going to rate something higher than five stars, which is kind of the you know the, the max, whether it was, um, I'm not sure if it was ever established that that was the absolute max, and you can't you can or cannot go over five. I'm not sure. However, if you're going to rate something um, higher than what the threshold of being the maximum point allowance is. I think all that states is that, you know, there was a personal connection, something that struck a chord with you personally, which is why it puts that match head and shoulders above something else. I mean, I am extremely happy that I've had, you know, this kind of reaction um, by someone who is as respected and uh, who makes a living critiquing matches. So if there's one person in the world that had said, you know, this is the greatest match I've ever seen, I'm, I'm a very happy camper. Um, I've had many of my supporters, many fans, many people that have never seen me before, have just started to watch some Japan Pro Wrestling and had said, you know, this is a great match. I had a lot of, of fun watching it. You know, it was fantastic or whatever. And this is all you know, great to me. Um, to have someone as respected as Dave, as Dave Meltzer saying that this is, in fact, you know, the greatest match I've ever seen, and to give it the unprecedented 6.25 star rating, um, it, it means the world to me. I've 
always wanted to, you know, make changes to the business to revolutionize it. And um, when things like this happen, and not only with Dave Meltzer, but with, you know, the average person, the non-wrestling fan, the hardcore wrestling fan, maybe fans that are used to just watching um, Ring of Honor or Lucha Underground or WWE or whatever, they go and they watch one of the matches. And if they have something positive to say, I think I'm doing, I feel like I'm doing something right. And I feel like, you know, I'm on the right path. All I want to do is um, kind of change the way that wrestling is. I'm looking for, um, you know, structurally the way I go about things, the way I go about the business. I'm trying to do things a little differently than normal. And um, the fact that there's this positive reaction to some of the things that I've been doing, um, I'm happy because this is just me being me. And um, if people enjoy it, if they're having fun, if they want to see more of it, well, I'm just going to keep trying as hard as I can and um, keep doing what I'm doing. So for, again, to answer the question, for Dave Meltzer to rate the match uh, 6.25 and 6 stars, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it means a lot to me because that's someone who's seen everything, absolutely everything. He's educated in all styles of wrestling. He understands um, wrestling from all corners of the globe. And for the story that I told, um, not being the classical, super technical wrestler, just me um, performing with my emotion, with my athletic ability, and just telling the story that I had in my brain that I really wanted to tell to the people, for that to have um, to go beyond the ring and to go beyond that live crowd and touch people in America, Canada, you know, the UK, all over the planet, um, it really means a lot to me. And I'm, I'm just, it, 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 it almost opens up another challenge for me. You know, I want to do more. And I don't necessarily mean like, okay, I'm going to go for the 6.5, but I even go back and watch the 6.25 star match. And I see things where, you know, I, I could maybe tweak it or something I didn't quite like and I could have done better. So I still feel like the best is yet to come. Um, but for, like I said, for Dave Meltzer to rate it so high, um, that is, it's, it's, I'm honored. And um, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing and keep trying my best. And um, whether I get another 6, another 6.25, a 7, a 5, or a 4, as long as I'm happy with my performances and the fans are happy, then, then I'm happy. Excellent. Thank you, Kenny. Um, all right, our next question here comes from, and it's a little bit also on the heels of your match at Dominion. This comes from Robert mm -hmm. Samo from FanboyNation.com. And his question for you, it starts off, most of us have seen your six-star match uh, with Kazuchi Okada, and we're familiar with your work with North American prom promotions. So mm -hmm. what surprises can those who have seen you in those promotions expect from you putting on a show for New Japan stateside? Hmm. Like I said, I sort of tailor my work to the area that I'm in and the promotion that I'm in. So, uh, you know, New Japan Pro Wrestling Kenny Omega is a little different from Ring of Honor Kenny. It's a little different from PWG Kenny, which is different from my uh, home promotion in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, PCW. They're all very different because uh, I'm working for the people in the house. But this is a very New Japan-focused and based show coming up. So um, I suppose uh, you're going to see something similar to what people have tuned into on New Japan Pro Wrestling World. You're going to see performances like, uh, you know, the Okada match at, at Tokyo Dome. You're going to see something like uh, my New Japan Cup and my, um, I think it was Sakura Genesis. It was Sakura Genesis? My match with Ishii, anyway. And, um, you know, something like the rematch with Okada again. Uh, I am sort of all in right now with um, my journey with New Japan. So that character, that version of Kenny Omega is kind of the person I really want to focus on for the year 2017. So um, if you are familiar with that person live, if you went to the Tokyo Dome, if you went to any um, live New Japan event, you know, you, you're going to be getting more of the same. And hopefully that's, that, that's, that's good. Um, but if you've seen something else, whether it be on the East coast or West coast or whatever uh, in the States, it's going to be a little different, but um I'm I'm hoping that um, you know fans will be happy and, and have a fun time with the matches in uh, in all cases and hopefully 
uh, things go well, I can uh, perform multiple times for you guys this weekend. All right, and going into this weekend, uh, we've got a question here from Brian Rose of Wrestling Observer, and he wants to know, given the hard physical matches that you've wrestled so far this year, and he says especially the 60-minute match at Dominion, Mm -hmm. how are you feeling physically headed into the United States title tournament this weekend? Um, Physically, I'm actually feeling really good. There aren't any... um, there's no nagging injuries like there were even last year. Um, the I, I had felt a little knackered after the 60-minute match with Okada, uh, just really depleted, just exhausted. So I took a couple of days just to eat whatever I wanted, rest a lot. I didn't focus so much on training or going to the gym or anything. And I think that really helped get, get me back on my feet because I was really – um, after that match, even just feeling like a blob. Um, but now that uh, we're already approaching the U.S. shows, I'm um, back to training really hard, um, doing my summer camp training that I usually do before the G1, starting a little early because we have the American shows. And, I, you know, I've been keeping up with what I've been pushing last year. Um, and I'm, I'm even bigger than I was last year. So to be able to push that same pace at a bigger at a bigger body size, I kind of suggest that my stamina is doing even better than it was at last year. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with where I'm at physically. Of course, things happen all the time. I could take a, you know, I could take a fall down my stairs and twist my ankle or break my leg or whatever. But as of right this moment, I'm feeling very good. That is good to hear. All right, let's see here. Our next question um, it comes from Raj Giri again with WrestlingInc.com, and he wants mm-hmm. to know, considering how quickly the New Japan Pro Wrestling shows sold out in L.A., and for those of you uh, who didn't know, it sold out in under two hours, which is pretty incredible. Yeah, um, awesome. What would you like to see done differently if and when New Japan returns to the U.S.? I mean, I always had faith in our product in the States. And I had really hoped that off the get-go, we had done something huge. But I do understand the humble beginnings, and this is going to be more of an intimate atmosphere, and that's fine too. Um, But, yeah, if we do it again next time, you know, let's double, triple the size. I think we can do it. Um, And that's just me having faith in our product and and actually me just having faith in myself, the Bullet Club, the Elite. Uh, we, I think we, as as like Bullet Club, especially as household names, are people are more familiar with us than I think maybe our company realizes. And um, we're all chopping at the bit to do more American stuff, and we want to get in front of as many live faces as possible. So um, I think with the, with the proper promoting, and um, as, especially if this show goes well, uh, we can definitely go way above and beyond what we're doing. In our uh, in our first two shows, and really go for it the next time we return to the states. Great. Um, let's see here. So, speaking of returning to the states, Sean Rossap uh, asking another question here from Fightful.com. Mm-hmm. He wants to know: Do you know of any additional plans that New Japan has for expansion into the U.S.? Uh, not that I know of, actually. Um, I'm sort of. Uh, I mean, I. I had kind of gone into uh, like my plans within Japan were were quite pressing and demanding of my time and and mental powers. So, to uh, I've I've unfortunately not been left out of the loop, but I've kind of uh, focused too much on what I've been doing in Japan to to actually hear or take part in the discussion for what plans going forward from here are going to be. So when they announce it or if they announce it or if there are discussions, it's I have no idea. I could only assume, though, that this is going to be successful and that um, we're going to look to add shows as quickly as possible. I would assume. I think it's going to – it's just a foregone conclusion at this point. All right. Uh, next question here. Um, this comes from Brian Rose again with Wrestling Observer, and he wants to know, given the large depth, talent depth in the U.S. IWGP tournament itself, who mm-hmm. are you looking forward to facing the most? 
Um, you know, I'm actually really excited for my first match against Hogan. I, uh, I, we've always had great chemistry together. I do believe that um, as two foreigners representing New Japan, it's a real cool way to uh, keep the tournament off and show, you know, the foreigner side of things in a foreign country. Uh, in the, I believe it's in the semi-main event that day. Uh, we haven't wrestled each other since last year, the G1, so it's almost been a year. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's just going to be fun to get there, get back in there with them and uh, show what we do best. Uh, I have actually had my fair share with Ishii. I'd love to say that I'm looking forward to wrestling Ishii again, but, uh, you know, here's hoping that he gets eliminated early. Uh, I've heard a lot of people say that they're hoping for myself and Naito to make it to the finals. And uh, I'm definitely not against wrestling him again. Um, you know, arguably the most popular faction in Japan versus arguably the most popular faction in um, the U.S. It's an interesting story, and it kind of really jives with the theme of the shows. Uh, yeah, there's so many possibilities. I mean, I loved, I've wrestled Zach once. I'd love to wrestle Zach again. There's just a ton of... of of options, and I'm I'm really looking forward to all of them. And um, I mean, even Ishii. I know I'd said that I've just wrestled him a bajillion times, like two tours ago. But we've only had two singles. I won one, lost one. You know, let's have the rubber match. Who cares? I'm I I think everyone in that tournament is is really good. And even um, Jay Lethal, another guy, one of the guys I respect most in, in all of wrestling, just a technical marvel in the ring. Um, I don't know where else we would have the chance to tie up unless I was able to take um, a Ring of Honor booking somewhere down the line. But this tournament and this, this is another good possibility for it. Um, tons of possibilities for fantasy matches and or dream matches. Of, I mean, of, of mine, not necessarily the fans. So I'm looking forward to almost every combination possible. All right, let's see here. Uh, next question. Uh, comes again from Sean Ross Sapp here, and he wants to know, um, you answered half of this question already, so we'll go with the first half. Uh, okay. What are your thoughts on Cody's championship uh, victory this past weekend with Ring of Honor? I mean, good for him, right? Uh, he had left another company uh, under a cloud, so to speak, and he had a vision for himself of what he could be, what he could become. Slowly but surely, he's becoming it. and He's showing that he can be the man. He can be um, the guy in whatever promotion that he chooses to wrestle for. And um, I had all the faith in the world in Cody, as I had said before, and still do. Um, and he's, he's proven that he can be that man in Ring of Honor. Now... He's uh, coming into the New Japan uh, USA shows with a little bit of fanfare. Still very new to the fold, but already was an IWGP heavyweight title shot. Um, you know, stranger things have happened. We had AJ Styles um, a couple years back walk right into the company, win the title immediately. This reminds me a lot of that. Okada is beaten. He's battered. He's bruised. Cody Rhodes is on top of the world. What could happen, I don't know. But whatever the case, I've always got my eye on the IWGP heavyweight title. I am never going to forget about that scene. I'm never going to ease up on my dream of becoming that champion. Whether it's my time now, whether I'm supposed to be the star of my, my own story, or if I'm just supposed to take a supporting role for now, that's fine. But I do wish Cody all the best, and I hope, that it is fitting of a main event classic. All right. Next question here comes from David Dixon Span again, and he wants to know, what was your reaction to the hot topic deal at first? And what do you think it means for you personally, as well as other Bullet Club members and NJBW in general? Well, when I had heard about the hot topic deal at first, I mean, we don't really, at least where I live, we don't really have hot topics. In, in Canada, so I'm not too too familiar with Hot Topic. So I jog my memory back to when I was in high school, and I would make trips uh, down to the states for like heavy metal concerts, 
So I remember, you know, stopping by Hot Topics and picking up, like, you know, Fear Factory shirts, Metallica shirts, um, you know, various power metal shirts. And, uh, you know, to, to get a deal with that, you know, something kind of tethered to my childhood a little bit. I was like, man, this is really cool. Like, because I remember when I would go to America for my, you know, road trips and such, there were Hot Topics everywhere. So to finally see my stuff, you know, in stores like these, um, you know, at a time when I, I was in just heavily into all uh, different types of music, um, to be you know lined up with with stuff like that, I just think it's really cool. So um, to have that product awareness and to actually be in a store like Hot Topic to be represented by them, uh, it's it's awesome. And um, I really hope it goes well. Uh, from what I've heard, the sales are doing fantastic. And I, I just really hope we can um, just get more eyes on everything that we do, more eyes on, on you know, me, Kenny Omega, the Bullet Club, the Elite, Young Bucks, Cody Rhodes. I'm just, I'm happy for it all. So I really hope it leads to even bigger things at Hot Topic. And I'm so glad to take a chance on us and, and that we're doing well there. All right. Next question here comes from Joseph Courier with uh, Wrestling Observer, and he wants to know, now, with another match, and we're looking forward to the G1 Climax tournament here, with another mm -hmm. match against Okada in the G1, how do you adjust to a match that will have a 30-minute time limit after going for 60 minutes last time? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've, uh, I've, I've, I've pondered the very same question in my brain. How does it even make sense that this match could now end within a 30 minute time limit, things are going to have to be drastically different. If it's to be at all believable, if I am to win against a guy that I couldn't even finish in 60 minutes, there is going to have to be a lot of differences that are noticeably different from the first two matches. Cause even the first match that was what 47, 48 minutes, right? Um, how do I finish the champ, possibly, within a half hour at the G1? I don't know. It's sort of one of those um, cross that bridge when I get there. But, uh, again, this is a very interesting story between us two, Okada and myself. Every time we are tossed into battle, there's something, even though every time it's for the IWGP Heavyweight title, there's always – something different to every encounter. And uh, this really is no different. Um, the third time meeting Okada in a year in a very short period of time. Um, how is the third match going to be different from the first and the second? Is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? Uh, who's going to win? How could it end within a half hour time limit? I don't know. But have faith because, well, as much as I, I hate to give him credit, Okada and myself have, have a lot of chemistry together in the ring, and I can't imagine one of our matches being terrible. So I do think the third match, wherever it is that we meet in the tournament, whatever is on the line, I do think it will be one to remember. Well said. All right, uh, next question here comes from Jim Barcelone with the Miami Herald, and he wants to know, in your opinion, what will it take for a company to compete in the States on WWE's business level? Hmm, a miracle? <laughs> you know, uh, WWE is so far ahead of the game in, in terms of business. I mean, they, they've, they've cornered a lot of the market, and um, I think, and, and this is just my opinion, I mean, you're never going to want to battle dollar for dollar against WWE. You're never going to want to battle size and scope with WWE because you just can't. We don't, you know, the, you need to, the resources that are required for such a thing are just nearly unfathomable. But what you want to do is I think you want to show an option, a very a viable, very entertaining option outside of WWE so that you're not competing directly with them. What you're doing is offering something 
completely different so that a WWE fan can also enjoy this other product. Or if you're disenfranchised, um, if you're just not happy with what WWE does, or if you don't even like that style of wrestling or whatever, there is something else completely different for you to watch and possibly enjoy. I mean, that's more important than just saying, okay, um, you know, WWE is is running this match and this match, so we're going to do the equivalent of this with our guys, and let's see who does better. I I think that's sort of missing the point, and I sort of think what we have is is very special, and that would be doing what we specialize in as an injustice. Um, I think what we need to do is just stick to our strengths, and then show what makes New Japan special in the American market first, rather than making a declaration of war and going straight after, you know, CKM. All right. Uh, next question here, um, and this comes, again, from Jim Barcelona. Where would you like to see New Japan Pro Wrestling hold another show in the U.S., and why? Uh, I, I would actually like to. And, and this is, you know, I'm a little biased here. But I had a lot of fun in a video game um, competition, a fighting game competition in Florida. And yes, I do know that kind of comes dangerously close to another home base. But I do feel that there are a great amount of just globally aware wrestling fans. You know, fans that aren't just watching for one product or one person. Um, There are people that just love wrestling. And I think those are the best kind of fans, the fans that are always looking to have fun at shows, fans that aren't closed-minded, they're open-minded to watching everything and anything as long as it's good. I really felt that in Florida, and I'd love to run a show in Florida as possible. All right. Uh, another question here from Sean Rossap. He wants to know, uh, do you see the Honma and Shibata injuries recently causing any in-ring changes for New Japan? Um, not, not really. I mean, if you look at the nature of the injury, uh, Hanma was, was a very freak accident and, uh, Shibata, um, I mean, it's still, it's still really unknown what was the straw that broke the camel's back, but I mean, it looked to be almost self-inflicted, um, you know, amongst many other issues. So... I, I just think that generally we're we're all being more careful in the ring and um, not careful in terms of how we throw stuff, you know, how we take things. It's more about knowing our own personal limits. Um, you know, as wrestlers, as we're seeing the the style and we're seeing humans and athletes evolve, we're all pushing ourselves harder and harder to stay ahead of the curve. And, you know, all of us are excited about breaking into, a, you know, a global market. And we all want to be – we all want to show why we're the best, why we're the best pure wrestling promotion. Um, so all of us, I mean, we're working harder in the ring. We're working harder in the gym. We're all dieting harder. Um, I, I just think that um, just with anything, um, you have to be careful how hard you're always pushing yourself. And sometimes you do need rest. And sometimes – you do need to know when too much is too much. And, uh, yeah, but in terms of, of all of our guys on the New Japan side, um, we're all just, I mean, what, what had happened is, uh, is terrible. It's terrible that, that two, two of our, our best guys are essentially, you know, retired and, um, you know, are now rehabilitating terrible injuries. But um, we're all very well trained, and we're all all always putting safety first. Um, so um, I would I would just hope that no one really is 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 watching the shows uh with a fear that there may be someone that's next. You know, oh wait, I can't wait to see who's next or I'm 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 worried that someone's gonna be next on the injury list. It was just two very sweet injuries. Um 
we're, we're very well aware, well aware of the issues at hand. And um, if anything, it was, it was a wake-up call for us to, to know that these things do happen and that we do have to be aware of, you know, if we're feeling sick or, you know, if we're feeling that um, we do have an egg injury, we shouldn't push ourselves too hard. So um, for, for fans that are worried about things like that, I, I, I wouldn't. Um, it's just that, unfortunately, injuries happen within the sport. And uh, sometimes they're minor, sometimes they, they are major. All right, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up in a couple of questions. So if anyone has any last questions they want to get in there, please feel free to send them our way. All right, this next question here comes from uh, Jim Barcelin with the Miami Herald, and he wants to know, uh, going back to the crowd that's going to be here in the U.S., mm -hmm. this is going to be a different crowd than what you have in Japan. He wants to know, will that change your thinking process of what you're going to do and how you do it? A little bit. Um, sometimes I, I, go, I, I go into a match knowing that I'm going to be uh, heavily booed. Or I go into a crowd, let's say if it's a small town I've never been to before, uh, there's a chance that this crowd isn't going to be too familiar with me. So I change the way that I move, that I act, that I wrestle, um, and I change it to more of an introductory style. You know, the introduction to Kenny Omega, this is me, this is what I'm all about. Uh, but I, I feel that the fans here are going to know um, pretty much all about me, all about the Bullet Club. Um, I mean, as you said, we sold out in under two hours, so I, I believe they're all familiar with the product. So I think I can just cut loose and um, just give everyone the greatest hits and uh, pop up with some new cool stuff for them too. So um, it's this kind of crowd that I feel like I can have the most fun in front of. So I'm really looking forward to doing what I do in front of an American crowd. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, last question here comes from Ryan McKinnell of Yahoo Sports, and he wants to, again, talking about this coming match, uh, do you feel like coming off the last two incredible matches against Okada, you mm -hmm. have any increased pressure for this upcoming show and the tournament? I mean, <laughs> there was increased pressure after the first match at the Tokyo Dome. Um, even before the Tokyo Dome, there was a ton of pressure. At the G1, there was a ton of pressure. Um it's a shame, but in wrestling, um, your peers, people that wrestle other promotions, people that represent other promotions, if you're in a position to do something special or if you're in a position to revolutionize something, change the business, um, essentially, people are going to be cheering against you. They're going to be hoping, waiting with bated breath for you to fail. And it's been that way since you won. And it's been that way since Tokyo Dome. And even if you have that little bit of success, it's okay, sure, you did all right, but we can't wait for you to slip up and fail just to expose yourself because you're a fraud. And then the match was Okada. Oh, okay, it was a decent match, but I'll bet it was because of Okada. I can't wait till you fail to show that you are a fraud. And then the match with Ishii. Oh, that match was good, but it must have been because of Ishii. So in the rematch, you're going to get exposed it's going to show that you're a fraud. And it just continues on and on and on. There's no winning these types of people over. So the types of pressure that I feel from these negative influences, it doesn't really bother me. It never really um, enters my mind. Uh, I always try to stay really positive. And as a storyteller um, and as an athlete, I just try to stay at the top of my game. I don't take anything that I do lightly. And I make sure that I'm always training. Every every chance I get, training smartly. Uh, I um, I want to make sure that I'm training intelligently, so that uh, I can be in the best shape that I can be in. And uh, when it comes to the stories that I tell, I try not to rehash any old stuff. I try to tell very human stories, and um, I think that focusing on that is what causes me to not really ever feel like there's pressure. A lot of the things that I do that I tell uh, in the ring, I relate to things that are happening around me in real life. And, um, you know, the real, very real emotions, feelings, 
And I think they're all feelings that, you know, us as humans feel in our everyday lives. And I try to show that in the ring um, more so than just moves. But I do try to, to chuck in some athleticism in there too for the wrestling purists and for, you know, people that are looking for an athletic contest. I think when you have the perfect combination of, you know, wrestling, the athletics, um, cutting edge stuff, creativity, but then you toss in the emotion as well, you can't really slip up too much, and there's going to be something that everyone can appreciate. Um, so I think that if I, as long as I, as, I, as I keep that combination of things within my matches and, and, and my journey to becoming the IWGP Heavyweight Championship or Champion, um, I don't think too many people will be disappointed uh, along the way. So people can put pressure on me or say that they can't wait for me to fail or whatever. Uh, it really doesn't bother me. Um, I'm very comfortable in my own skin and very comfortable with the type of performer that I've become. And I just really become anxious and excited to tell my next story. And I think uh, the American tournament is a, another good platform for, for that. All right. Thank you so much, Kenny, for all of your extremely thoughtful answers here. I uh, really appreciate you today taking the time to talk to everybody. And thank you, everybody, for calling in. We really appreciate you taking the time again to come in here today and take an hour out of your incredibly busy schedules for this conference call. I will be sending out um, – it takes about an hour or two for me to get the audio from this converted to a format that you guys can use. Uh, so I'll go ahead and get that started, and I'll send that out to everybody. I'll also send along some Dropbox um, files or Dropbox folders that we have that have photos that you are more than welcome to use featuring Kenny in action, including uh, some of the fun ones that are from Wrestle Kingdom 11. Also got some just now uh, a couple hours ago from Dominion that you guys will be able to use. Uh, if you guys have any follow-up questions, anything else you need to know, please, don't fe please feel free to shoot me an email. And if you haven't already RSVP'd for tomorrow's call with Cody or Wednesday's call with Josh Barnett, please feel free to reach out to me and I will make sure you get on that call. Um, all right. Well, thank you for everything, Kenny. I will go ahead and wrap this up now. Oh, great. Thank you very much. All right. Everything going?